Uh, thank you for your uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Tomotaka Kuwahara. Uh, my operation is RIKEN, RQC, and CPR. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to talk, you, uh, to talk to you about my work of the clustering of conditional mutual information and quantum Markov structure at arbitrary temperatures. Uh, I'm sorry uh, that I have not uh, uploaded this result on archive, but I want to yeah, uh, upload this result archive as soon as possible. Okay, so I first show the introduction. Uh, my, the main purpose of this talk is to clarify the universal aspect of the entanglement structure at low temperatures. Uh, in recent uh, quant uh, quantum many body physics, the keyword of the low temperature is quite important because it um, the captures uh, a genuine um, the quantum effect in quantum many body physics. And uh, relevant to this point, uh, one of the most important conjectures uh, is uh, regarding on the uh, quantum Markov properties. That says that the exponential decay of the conditional mutual information holds at arbitrary temperatures. Uh, I abbreviate the conditional mutual information by CMI uh, for short. Okay, so I first show the uh, difference between the high temperature and low temperatures. Uh, in, the case of, in the case of high temperature uh, phases, the inverse temperature beta is smaller than some co constant temperatures, and this threshold temperature. And uh, under this condition, the almost all the uh, quantum given states uh, show the similar properties. For example, the clustering theorem, I mean the exponential decay of the correlation holds at, uh, at above the, uh, some uh, uh, threshold temperatures. And in quantum information theory, uh, it, it is also known that this quantum given state shows, uh, uh, only shows uh, uh, short range entanglement. In other words, it can be constructed only by using finite depth quantum circuit. So in this sense, the uh, quantum given state in high temperature phase shows a very similar property in, in, in the sense that it has only the short range entanglement. On the other hand, this uh, situation very uh, radically changes for low temperature case. Uh, in this case, the thermal phase transition can occur. So in this case, the clustering of correlation function no longer holds. So the correlation length is long range. Uh, yeah, so in this sense, the structure of the, uh, yeah, the characteristic of the Hamiltonian uh, highly influence the phases of the matter. In, this, uh, in the aspect of the uh, information theories, the computational, computation of the partition function is classified to the NP hard problem. So the structure of the quantum given state is quite uh, complicated in high temperature state. And our, yeah, uh, and our uh, uh, question is what universally holds even at low temperatures? At first glance, uh, we can no longer hope uh, that the universal structure of the, uh, yeah, universal theorem uh, is satisfied in low temperature quantum given state. But uh, in, in recent uh, decades, uh, it has been known that uh, some kinds of the entanglement structures show only the short range properties. The representative example is the summary area law. The summary area law uh, considers uh, uh, mutual information between some system A and system B. And uh, then the uh, area law implies that the uh, amount of the information only uh, proportional to the surface area of the subregion A instead of the volume. And the summary area law is given by this form. And the coefficient uh, is originally uh, proportional to beta uh, in the 2008 papers, but uh, this point is uh, improved to sublinear form. But anyway, the point is that the information uh, between A and B is localized around the uh, surface. And other example is the tensor network re representation of the quantum given state at arbitrary temperatures. For any quantum given state on graph, the tensor network efficient tensor network representation is obtained by choosing the bond dimension as larger as n to the polynomial order beta. So only the polynomial number of the uh, parameters is enough to characterize the quantum given state. So from this result, we uh, expect that the entanglement may be short range even at low temperature. But this is, uh, of course, not, uh, not true in very general cases. Uh, some of the uh, long range entanglement structure uh, still long, uh, yeah, some of the yeah, entanglement structure is still long range even at uh, uh, finite temperatures. Yeah, for example, the 4D toric code models uh, in the quantum given state show the long range entanglement. And uh, in very recent, the uh, celebrated NLTS theorem show any 
low energy states show the long range entanglement. Of course, this NLTS only holds for graph systems. Okay, so to, 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 to clarify uh, the, what kinds of uh, entanglement structure is short range, I want to show the most, the simplest case uh, that is a bipartite entanglement between the subsystem A and subsystem B, which is uh, separated by some uh, uh, distance capital R. Then uh, in our previous paper, uh, we showed that the uh, bipartite entanglement shows the short range properties and the exponential decay of the uh, PPT relative entanglement holds uh, like this form. And uh, yeah, in this, this uh, result comes from the uh, exponential uh, clustering theorem for the quantum correlation, which is a quantum version of the clustering theorem in classical, uh, in, uh, classical uh, theories. In this case, we consider the uh, 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 convex roof of the standard bipartite correlations, uh, and uh, by in the analogy of the entanglement uh, uh, definitions, we consider the infimum to all, any kind of uh, definition, uh, de decompositions. Then this kind of QC also uh, always uh, satisfies the uh, clustering theorem like this form. And the correlation length is roughly uh, proportional to the order beta. So the uh, bipartite entanglement uh, have a, a length scale which is proportional to the order beta. So if the beta is order one constant, then the uh, entanglement is short range. From this uh, bipartite entanglement structure, we expect that uh, the long range entanglement only exists as more than tripartite correlation. Then uh, we have another question, what universally holds for tripartite correlations? Okay, then the, uh, usually the bi uh, tripartite correlation is quite ambiguous uh, and we don't know how to uh, define the uh, multipartite correlations. And as long as I know, uh, the most well-established well uh, measure for the tripartite correlation is the conditional mutual information. The conditional mutual information is uh, defined for the tripartite systems A and C, uh, which is uh, uh, conditioned on the subsystem B. And the uh, conditional mutual information is given by the difference between the condition, uh, sorry, mutual information between A and BC minus A and uh, mutual information between A and B. The conditional mutual information is used to characterize the topological orders. Uh, the Kitaev uh, Preskill and Levin Ben topological entanglement entropy is defined by using the uh, CMI. And the topological order is known to include the uh, tripartite correlations. So uh, we can uh, say that the CMI inherently uh, includes the tripartite correlations. And uh, as very convenient properties, uh, the conditional mutual information also have very nice properties uh, relevant to the uh, recovery map. Uh, this point has been uh, extensively studied around uh, 10 years ago, and the celebrated fuzz Lennon theorem uh, established the clear relationship between the uh, precision of the recovery map and the uh, conditional mutual information. And our purpose is to establish universal theorem for CMI at arbitrary temperatures. Okay. And uh, I, I want to explain uh, what is the difference between the classical uh, case and the quantum case. And the classical case, uh, the very uh, convenient theorem generally holds. The theorem's name is the Hamathre Clifford theorem. The Hamathre Clifford theorem uh, argues that the Markov network is equivalent to the classical Gibbs state. So classical Gibbs state is always given by the Markov network. And Markov network is uh, characterized by the conditional independence, uh, sorry, con yeah, conditional independence between uh, separated variables. Now uh, we consider the um, uh, many body uh, probability distribution, uh, which from the X1 to X7, then the Markov network implies that the X1 probability only uh, depends on the X2 and the X3 when we consider the uh, conditional uh, distributions. Now the X1 is only connected to X2 and X3, so the conditional mutual information for X1 to X2 to X7 is only given by this form. And this Markov network <coughs> implies that the uh, conditional mutual information, the CMI is always finite range, so X1 and uh, uh, the CMI between X1 and the X4 to X7 is always equal to zero because of conditional independence. 
And this kind of Markov unity is one of the most fundamental probability, uh, properties in probability theories. And uh, for example, it is utilized, for example, the neural network and uh, uh, Boltzmann machine learning. And so in the case of classical given state, the CMI has all, always a finite length. And uh, be, uh, beyond this finite length, then the CMI is equal to zero. Then uh, the classical given state always has a finite length of the CMI. Then uh, we want to know how about the quantum given state. In the case of the quantum given state, the exact Markov property does not no longer hold, and the only the approximate version of the quantum Markov property is expected to hold. And the quantum Markov conjecture says that any quantum given state is the approximate quantum Markov network. It implies that when we consider, oh, oh. Okay, in, in, in this case, uh, if we consider the uh, condition mutual information between A and the C, condition of B, then this decays exponentially uh, with the distance. And this kind of uh, quantum Markov conjecture has uh, various applications, and uh, this, these two ones are uh, some uh, exa examples. One is the efficiency guaranteed algorithm for quantum given sampling can be obtained from this uh, quantum Markov conjectures, uh, if the Markov conjecture is true. Uh, from this uh, uh, result, if the uh, ground state, uh, sorry, quantum given state is non-critical, I mean the clustering theorem holds, then the quantum given state is constructed from finite depth unitary circuit. And other application is the strong sum area law. Usually the area law only in, uh, considers the total amount of the information between A and B. But the, this uh, uh, CMI also characterizes the distribution of the information. So this point is also given by Cato and Brando paper in 2019. And I also note that uh, the, this conjecture is quite, uh, yeah, uh, this conjecture is only uh, obtained when we consider the uh, A and B and C constitute the total system. And this condition is quite crucial. And if the A and B and C is subsystem of the total system, the CMI can be long range. Uh, this point is, for example, holds for example in the case of 4D toric code model. In the case of 4D toric code model, the CMI uh, of the uh, subsystem it can be long range at the constant temperatures. Okay, so I want to show the known results. The quantum Markov conjecture has been solved at high temperatures uh, case, uh, in 1D case and 2D case. In 1D case, the clustering theorem is utilized, and in the 2D case, the convergence of the cluster expansion has been utilized. And other case is the matrix product state. Uh, by assuming the spectral gap of the transfer matrices, then the CMI is uh, known to be uh, sh uh, short range, I mean, the exponentially decays. And I'm not sure whether the, uh, proving the spectral gap uh, is uh, difficult or not, but this is also very interesting uh, uh, directions. And, uh, this, uh, and our question is, can we prove the Markov conjecture at low temperatures? The challenging point of the low temperature case is that there are, no, uh, there are few mathematical techniques to treat the low temperature quantum given state. And I also note that uh, there is a flaw uh, in my previous paper in PLA 2020. Uh, this flaw was pointed out by, uh, out by Samuel Scarlett and Alvaro Alhambra. And uh, as long as uh, I uh, searched, uh, this uh, flaw is not so subtle one, and uh, we need a uh, uh, significant uh, modification. So in this sense, the high temperature case is still open. Okay, so I want to show my main result. The main result is uh, uh, I partially solve the uh, conjectures and CMI decay holes for at arbitrary temperatures. And the key technique for the proof is the uh, uh, analysis of the quasi-locality of the effective Hamiltonian on the subsystem. And, okay, so I, show, I will show, oh, okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, before <laughs> showing the uh, main result, I want to show the setup of this talk. Uh, I consider the quantum given state and uh, consider the many body Hamiltonian, general many body Hamiltonian like this form. And this HIJ uh, denotes the uh, bipartite interaction between the site I and site J. And uh, this HIJ decays exponentially with the distance. And uh, in this uh, uh, slide, I only show the two-body Hamiltonians, but uh, this is a uh, generalized arbitrary K-local Hamiltonian. And I denote the quantum given state like this form. <coughs> For simplicity, 
uh, I show the quantum given state in the form of exponential of beta h instead of the exponential of minus beta h. But this point is not so important. And resistance matrix uh, on the some subset L is uh, denoted by using the uh, index of L uh, for of the subsystem. And this is defined by the uh, partial trace. And the conditional inform mutual information is given by this form. Okay, and, uh, oh, okay. Uh, and I also show the uh, three levels of the approximate Markovianity uh, exist. Uh, in the previous slide, I show the Markov conjecture implies exponential decay of the conditional mutual information. But in this inequality, I did not show the subset dependence. I mean, there are no coefficient in this uh, inequality. And dependent on the uh, subset dependence, we can classify the uh, exponential decay of the CMI to three levels of the uh, uh, Markovianity. The first one is the global Markov property. In this case, A and C can be arbitrary large. For example, A and C can be as large as the uh, system size. And the local Markov property implies that the uh, minimum of the A and C, uh, uh, minimum of the, of the A and C should be order one constant, but the, the other one can be, as large, uh, can be arbitrary large. And the weakest one is the pairwise Markov property. In this case, A and C should be order one constant. In classical probability theory, these three one is, uh, uh, these, these, these three ones are equivalent as long as the temperature is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, temperature is finite. But in the case of quantum case, I'm not sure whether these three, the, uh, three concepts are uh, equivalent or not. Anyway, in order to obtain the global Markov property, the coefficient should be, uh, and the coefficient of this uh, inequality should be at most a polynomial increase with the subset size A or C. So the most desired form of the Markov conjecture is given by this form. Okay. And our main results are given by this slide. And the exponential decay of the CMI is obtained for 1D case and the 2D case. Uh, in the case of 1D, there are no subset dependence, so the, desire, most, uh, the most desired form has been obtained, and the correlation length of the CMI is given by order beta. On the other hand, uh, in the 2D case, the exponential decay of the CMI uh, is obtained, but there exists some, uh, the coefficient which is equal to the Hubert space dimension or SAC. So, in this case, in, from this uh, inequality, uh, I cannot uh, prove the quantum Markov conjecture in high dimensions in the complete sense, uh, because this uh, uh, Hilbert space dimension of the AC is, uh, increases exponentially with the subset size A plus C. So this upper bound is meaningless when the, the subset size A and C uh, uh, is, uh, when the subset A or C is macroscopically large. And uh, this inequality only meaningful when A and C is sufficiently small. So in this sense, only the pairwise Markov property is obtained from this uh, to the result. And I also compare uh, this uh, result on the 1D case with the previous cato brando theorem, uh, which shows uh, uh, sub-exponential decay of the condition of mutual information like this form. Here is the sub-exponential decay, and the correlation length uh, is uh, equal to the, I mean, the correlation length of the standard correlation function. And the standard correlation function generally shows the exponential increase with the uh, temperatures. So uh, their result uh, gives the same, I mean, the dependence of the uh, temperature as the uh, standard correlation function. And our result uh, improved the exponential decay form, and the correlation length is also exponentially improved. Okay, so, okay, so I will show, I also show the relation to the entanglement clustering of, uh, I mean the bipartite entanglement clustering. The CMI is deeply related to the squashed entanglement. The squashed entanglement is uh, given by the uh, conditional mutual information uh, between A and B conditioned on the subsystem E. This subsystem E is uh, defined by the extension of the original uh, quantum uh, state, rho AB to rho ABE, the reduced density matrix is equal to the rho AB. So this, uh, for any kind of, uh, I mean, the extension of the uh, or, uh, original state rho AB, we take the infimum of the conditional mutual information, then uh, which is e equal to the squashed entanglement. 
And by, using, uh, by choosing the subset E as the subset C in the total system, then we can prove that the exponential decay of the CMI implies that the uh, squashed entanglement is always smaller than the uh, CMI. Uh, yeah, CMI, okay. CMI, uh, which is uh, uh, given for the uh, AB conditioned on C. So we can also prove that squashed entanglement decays exponentially. And uh, as a very convenient point, the squashed entanglement satisfies the faithfulness. The faithfulness implies that the, uh, uh, the squashed entanglement is equal to zero if and only if the, the uh, target quantum state is separable state. Uh, in this case, uh, so we can, uh, we can prove this kind of inequalities. Uh, the original result is given by Fen uh, Fernand Brando, and this inequality is given by the uh, uh, Ludovico Ramis uh, PhD thesis. And the closeness of the target quantum given state on the sub uh, subsystem AB uh, is uh, close to the separable state uh, with the closeness like this form. So if the squashed entanglement is equal to zero, then the delta AB is also equal to zero. And by using these properties and uh, combining this property with the technique in our previous papers, uh, we can also prove the exponential decay of the relative entanglement uh, like this form. And in the previous papers, only the PPT relative entanglement uh, is considered and uh, we cannot uh, exclude the uh, long rangeness of the bound entanglement, but from this result, we can, uh, we, we can uh, ensure that any kind of, including the bound entanglement decays exponentially uh, with the distance because the relative entanglement uh, captures uh, true uh, yeah, captures the bound entanglement. Okay, then, okay, so from now, I will show the uh, main techniques to derive the main result. The point is the entanglement Hamiltonian and the quasi-locality of the entanglement Hamiltonian or the Hamiltonian of mean force. The entanglement Hamiltonian is defined by the effect of the Hamiltonian of the reduced density matrix. Uh, any kind of reduced density matrix is formally given by this form by taking the logarithm of the uh, reduced density matrix. Then this effective Hamiltonian is called the entanglement Hamiltonian or the Hamiltonian of mean force. And the important point is quasi-locality of the uh, effective Hamiltonian is deeply related to the decay of the CMI. So the decay rate of the quasi-locality uh, gives the decay rate of the CMI. So if we can uh, derive the quasi-locality of the effective Hamiltonian, we can also prove the decay of the CMI. But the challenging point is there are no mathematical method to treat this effective Hamiltonian. And my main technical contribution is uh, to, um, the, uh, to treat the effective Hamiltonian systematically. And the basic strategy for the proof uh, is decomposed to these three steps. The first one is approximation of the uh, approximation of the reduced, reduced density matrix in, the for, in this exponential form. This Vx is some uh, quasi-local operator and H0 is some uh, uh, short range Hamiltonians. And uh, by using this uh, ep exponential expressions in the step two, uh, I prove the quasi-locality of the logarithm of this uh, uh, approximate reduced density matrix. This is approximation of the uh, exact reduced density matrix. So we have to connect this approximation to the upper bound of the CMI. This is a third step. And in this uh, talk, I, I concentrate on the first step and the second step uh, because the second, uh, step three is rather uh, complicated and dirty, but uh, very straightforward. So I consider the step one and step two uh, separately. In the step one, the 1D case and 2D case uh, need different formalism. In the 1D case, we utilize uh, uh, belief propagations. And in the case of 2D case, uh, I use uh, uh, partial trace projections. And in the step two, the most straightforward way is to utilize the Magnus expansion or the BCH expansion, but uh, uh, the Magnus expansion is uh, known to be divergent in general. So we need to develop new techniques. Okay, so I first show, I first consider the uh, proof technique one, the exponential expression of the partial trace. In 1D case, uh, we use uh, belief propagation. 2D case, partial trace projections utilized. 
Okay. Uh, okay. So I start from the 1D case. I first uh, uh, explain what is the quantum belief propagations. Uh, there are two formalism of the quantum belief propagation. The first one is given by Hastings, and second one is given by the Kim in 2012. And in this uh, uh, slide, I, uh, I adopt the version, the Isaac Kim version. And roughly speaking, the quantum belief propagation characterizes the transformation from uh, some uh, original Gibbs state, exponential beta a, to the part of the Gibbs state, which is given by exponential beta a plus b, and uh, A and B is now arbitrary operators. Then the belief propagation, uh, quantum belief propagation is uh, formally given by this one. Oh, sorry, this minus beta should be uh, beta. Uh, this minus, exponent minus beta is also beta. Okay, and uh, okay, so this quantum belief propagation operator is given by this exponential form, and this small phi b tau is given by using the time evolution of the uh, operator B by the A plus tau B with some filter function F beta P. And uh, if the A and B is quasi-local, for example, A is some short-range Hamiltonian is, and B is some local operators on site, then this time evolution, after the time evolution, the operator spreading is finite, I mean, uh, approximately finite, uh, which is proportional to the uh, time T uh, using the uh, Lee Robinson bound. So this phi b tau uh, is proven to be quasi-local by using a Lee Robinson bound. Then this, uh, I mean, the uh, belief propagation operator is also quasi-local. And this uh, uh, filter function f beta p is now given by this form, uh, which is always smaller than this form. And uh, this is uh, exponentially small uh, with respect to the uh, t over beta. So if the time is sufficiently large than the uh, inverse temperature beta, then uh, this uh, filter function is almost equal to zero. So we can uh, roughly truncate the uh, uh, time evolution up to t is proportional to order beta. So the uh, <coughs> operator spreading of this, uh, uh, I mean the uh, belief propagation operator is roughly proportional to the inverse temperatures. Okay, then uh, I show how to connect the quantum belief propagation operator to the reduced density matrix. I first consider the uh, three partition of the total system and L is the target uh, subsystem and X is defined by the extended region uh, of the uh, target, uh, uh, target subspace L and Y is the uh, complement system of the X and Y and uh, X, X has some uh, length of the uh, small L. Then uh, I consider the uh, decomposition of the Hamiltonian like uh, this form and round HY characterize the boundary interaction between X and Y. Then belief propagation technique characterize the uh, uh, decomposed uh, original Gibbs state like this form. Then uh, we can now uh, ensure that uh, this round HY is quasi-local uh, around the boundary between X and Y. So this can be uh, approximated by using some other uh, belief propagation operator, phi tilde x, y. Then by using this uh, approximate quantum Gibbs state, uh, we take the partial trace with respect to the subset L. Then the trace of the L commute with the phi tilde x, y. So uh, the, uh, the partial trace is given by this form. And this partial trace, uh, I mean the exponential, uh, beta HLX does not include the information of the subset Y. So <coughs> this can be uh, formally given by this form. In this case, HX tilde is completely non-local in the region X, but the HY is still quite local. And this is the uh, desired form of the exponential form, I mean the approximation of the uh, reduced density matrix by the exponential form. And by using the Lee Robinson bound, uh, we can estimate the error uh, between this uh, uh, form and this form is given by this form. And the point is uh, the one D. I mean, the point is that the uh, surface region of the uh, X appears in the uh, exponent. Uh, if the, in the case of one D, any uh, any regions, uh, any surface region for the subset is. Uh, uh, have a uh, order one constant, 
But in the case of 2D, uh, this uh, X is defined by using the extended region of the original uh, subset L. So the uh, surface region have a size uh, which is proportional to small L to the power of D minus one. So if the D is larger than two, the exponent uh, in the error bound is always meaningless as long as the beta is sufficiently large. So uh, uh, in high dimensional system. So in this sense, the belief propagation formalism is only meaningful uh, in one D case. So in, in, in this way, uh, we need another uh, formalism to characterize this, this kind of exponential uh, approximations. Oh. Okay, so in the case of a high dimensional case, uh, we take the alternative approach I first uh, uh, extend the original quantum given state by introducing ancillas, uh, which is connected to the subset uh, L and LA. And, uh, and uh, in this case, the uh, partial trace with respect to the subsystem L is given by uh, using the maximally entanglement state between the uh, subset L and the ancillar systems. And uh, yeah, and this form. This is very straightforward to check it. And, uh, uh, and I define the partial trace projection as a proje projection operator to this maximally entanglement state. And the QL is also given by one minus PL. Then the uh, reduced density matrix is given by using, the, uh, uh, by using the, this form by acting the uh, PTP operator from the left and from the right, then uh, the reduced density matrix is, is obtained. And uh, this, uh, the logarithm of this, the logarithm of this uh, operator is uh, still very difficult to treat. So I first consider the approximate version of the PTP operators. And uh, now the PL tau is given by exponential form of uh, exponential minus tau QL. QL is defined by this. So if the tau is infinitely large, then the uh, approximate version of the PTP operator is equal to the exact uh, uh, PTP operators. So uh, we can approximate the uh, reduced density matrix by using uh, approximate version of the PTP operator like this form. And this is the desired form of the desired exponential form of the approximation for the original quantum given, uh, reduced density matrix. And this approximation error uh, is uh, roughly uh, uh, estimated by this form, and the Hubert space dimension of the subsystem L appears as a coefficient. So the tau should be as large as the logarithmic of the uh, DL, uh, which is uh, proportional to the subsystem size. This point uh, makes uh, a bad, uh, I mean, the bad, depend bad, bad subset dependence of the CMI decay, as I explain afterward. Okay, so I show the proof technique too, the calculation of the exponential operators. Okay, and uh, yeah, and I consider the logarithmic form uh, like this form. And uh, okay, now the calculation of this one uh, is a purpose, but and the straightforward way is to utilize the Magnus expansion. The Magnus expansion is a continuous version of the baker campbell hausdorff formula. baker campbell hausdorff formula uh, considering the exponential a and the expon logarithm of the exponential a times the exponential b. And uh, uh, this is a kind of discrete version of the uh, exponential connections, but the Magnus expansion considers a continuous version of the exponential operators. And this is uh, decomposed to the omega one plus omega two plus omega three plus blah, 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 blah. And omega one is simply given by the in, uh, integral of the eta one. And omega two is given by the, uh, using the uh, commutator between uh, different uh, eta one and eta two. And omega three is also given by uh, using the multi commutator eta one, eta two, eta three, and so on. And uh, omega m is usually uh, uh, expressed by using uh, m's uh, uh, March commutators. The, the notoriously difficult point of the Magnus expansion is that the Magnus expansion is usually not convergent. Uh, if the A tau one is uh, sufficiently smaller than some order one constant, then uh, it is known that Magnus expansion is convergent. But uh, this, in this case, we consider the Hamiltonian as the uh, exponent of uh, yeah, exponent. So. 
This eta one has always have a, uh, is macroscopically large with the system size. So magnetic expansion is usually uh, not convergent. And this point is uh, very uh, serious in the case we consider the unitary time evolutions. In the case of unitary time evolutions, uh, this uh, uh, logarithm of, of the operator is very similar to the random matrix. So this kind of heating problem in Floque, uh, yeah, Floque systems is also uh, very serious in, in the case we consider the imaginary time evolutions. So we have to take another route to characterize the uh, logarithm of the uh, exponential connections. And if the uh, exponential connection is given by this form, and the ex exponential beta a is sandwiched by some other exponential epsilon b operators. In this case, we can uh, develop very simple uh, expansions, uh, which is defined from the magnetic expansions, which is given by this form, and c is uh, defined by using a time evolution with some uh, uh, filter function g beta t. This g beta t decays exponentially uh, with the time. So, so if the A or B, A and B is quasi-local operator, this C is also quasi-local. So the quasi-locality of the logarithm of the uh, exponential operator is also uh, uh, yeah, preserved in these uh, expressions. The proof of this uh, uh, equation is quite simple by using the quantum belief propagation by Hastings versions. In the Hastings version of the quantum belief propagation, we consider the uh, yeah, perturbation of the original quantum given state like this form, and the phi epsilon b is given by using this uh, form. Now, uh, phi epsilon b is one plus epsilon b plus beta uh, two, two i epsilon over beta times uh, like, like this form. And this uh, belief propagation operator is equal to the operator C. So uh, we can write this uh, phi epsilon b like this form. Then by inserting this expression to this one, then we obtain this one. So this is a unitary operator. So uh, I act the uh, exponential minus two i epsilon c from the left and the exponential two i epsilon c from the right. Uh, we obtain that the exponential connection is given by this form. And this is also a unitary operator. So we can insert the uh, unitary operator uh, into the uh, exponent to this, uh, to this beta a plus two epsilon b. And then by taking the first order, first order of the epsilon, then we obtain these expressions. Then uh, by, con by uh, repeatedly using these uh, uh, expressions, uh, we can uh, express arbitrary exponential connection in this form, like this form, by, by this very simple form. And uh, yeah, and this u tau is given by the uh, uh, unitary time evolution, uh, unitary time evolution by c tau one, and b tau is also uh, uh, b, b tau hat is defined by using the unitary operator u tau, and c tau is also given by the uh, time evolutions for with respect to a tau one with the filter function g b t. But uh, the expression itself is quite simple, but the uh, quasi-locality analysis of this exponential operator is quite difficult. So one of the difficulty comes from the exponential towers uh, from this expression. In the, in the first uh, in the, uh, ex expansions, this is very simple. And in the second uh, expansions, we use uh, this, uh, uh, this part is uh, given by the uh, exponential form of this one. So the exponential minus two i, yeah, like the further expansion is given by this form. And now this C2 is given by using the, uh, the time evolution of these operators. Now the uh, time evolution is given by this form. And at this stage, the C2 is double exponential operators. And by, uh, yeah, by repeating this process, the generally the C tau one is given by infinite exponential towers, exponential, 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 like this form. So the quasi-locality analysis uh, easily diverges to infinity. Uh, so we need very careful uh, treatment of this uh, kind of approximations. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, for, uh, formulas. And other uh, technical uh, difficulty comes from the divergence of the filter function g beta t. The, this is a uh, uh, yeah, uh, difficult point to utilize uh, uh, Hastings version of the quantum belief propagations. 
yeah, this one. And the, in, in the, in the uh, either Kim version of the belief propagation, this kind of divergence does not appear. But in order to obtain the uh, operator logarithm, we need this formalism. And the g beta t is uh, proportional to one over t if t is sufficiently small. So the g beta t is infinity. Uh, and the integral of the g beta t is infinity. To avoid this uh, divergence, uh, we decompose the time, of, uh, time integral to the uh, t is larger than delta t and t is larger than some small delta t's. And decomposition is given by this form. And the, in the first point is okay because g beta t uh, it has finite values. But and the, the second term, the filter function is repre replaced by t times g beta t, and t times g beta t is proportional to order one. So this is convergent. But instead of this convergence, I have to we have to treat the uh, commutator between a tau one and b tau one uh, ta time evolutions. This point also makes the analysis very complicated. And by uh, overcoming any, uh, every, I mean, the, uh, difficulty, uh, we can prove the quasi-locality of the unitary operator to characterize the logarithm of the exponential operator u tau. In this uh, uh, case, uh, we consider that the v is quasi-local operator around some region L, and h0 is some short-range Hamiltonians. And then by using some deep Robinson technique and other kind of uh, uh, calculations, we can prove that the quasi-locality of the unit operator u tau and the, the region L. Uh, now we consider the uh, commutator between the u tau and some ui. ui is arbitrary unit operator on the side i, and i is separated from the region L by cap uh, the small r. And uh, in the analogy of the deep Robinson bound, this kind of commutator characterizes the quasi-locality of the unit operator u tau. And the uh, U tau, the, I mean, the quasi locality is roughly uh, given by this form. Okay, then the point, the difficulty now is that, oh, yeah, the difficulty is now, uh, the, the difficulty now is that uh, this quasi locality of the unitary operator does not imply that the unitary operator U tau can be approximately determined only by the neighboring region of the uh, subset L. Uh, even, even if the unitary operator u tau is quasi-local, the, the property of the unitary operator may be uh, influenced by the far from regions uh, from the uh, original region L. So we have to exclude these uh, uh, possibilities. For this purpose, uh, I consider the unitary operator u tau L tilde. L, L tilde is some ball regions from the subset L and uh, U tau L tilde is determined only by using the information in the uh, region L tilde. Now this U tau L tilde is defined by the exponential operator for subset, I mean the Hamiltonians, H0 L tilde and V L tilde. So this U tau L tilde is only determined by the information of, of the uh, inside the L tilde. And our question is whether this uh, approximation holds uh, in general. Now, uh, H0 L tilde is replaced by H0, and considering this one. And by using the result of the quasi-locality uh, results for U tau, and by, uh, yeah, by calculating other uh, intricate uh, calculations, uh, we prove that the, uh, the unitary, op I mean the exponent logarithm of the exponential connection is the approximated by using the unitary operator only inside the L tilde regions. And the upper bound is the same as the quasi-locality of the unitary operators. So we have obtained that the uh, approximation of the, I mean, the quasi-locality of the exponential operator is characterized by the uh, unitary operator around the region L tilde. And this U tau L tilde characterizes the quasi-locality of the effective Hamiltonian. And the error rate is given by this form. And uh, in, in the uh, previous slide, I considered the two, uh, uh, 1D case and 2D case. In the case of 1D case, the uh, the partial trace is given by this form, and the v, tau v is, uh, exponential tau v is given in the form uh, of the belief propagation operators. And hx star plus hy is short range. Then, if uh, from this expression, the tau is equal to order one, and uh, v, uh, I mean the v, yeah, yeah, v is uh, uh, equal to order beta, 
So by inserting this uh, expression to the 1D upper bound, we obtain the error like this form. In the case of 2D, we consider the approximate PDP operators, exponential minus tau QL. So and, uh, uh, to, get, to achieve the good approximation, we have to choose tau is larger than order of the subsystem size, and V is equal to order one. So the error rate is given by this form. So uh, the bad dependence of the subsystem uh, in the CMI already appears here. And uh, this comes from the uh, quasi-locality analysis for the exponential operators. Uh, which is dependent on the exponential of tau v. So if we could improve this, uh, I mean, the exponential tau v in the, uh, dependence of the quasi-locality of the exponential operator to the polynomial form, like polynomial of tau v times the exponential minus uh, uh, order r over beta, like, like this uh, uh, improvement, we can prove the uh, desired form of the CMI. Uh, but uh, at this stage, I am pessimistic of, on this uh, improvement. I mean that the exponential of tau v uh, independent, uh, sorry, exponential tau v dependence of the error is already optimal, at, at, at least in the level of the mathematical level. Uh, because uh, uh, I can uh, find some uh, explicit example that shows the exponential, I mean, the amplification of the quasi-localities. So yeah, we need a very, uh, yeah, another uh, more, I mean, the uh, alternative approaches to, to access the quasi-locality of the effective Hamiltonian to derive the desired form of the CMI decay. Okay, so I, I want to summarize the talk and also show some future problems. Uh, in this talk, I consider the conjecture on the quantum Markov property, uh, which implies exponential decay of the CMI. And the most uh, desired form is given by this form. The coefficient is given by polynomial AC, and the exponential decay is obtained. And, and I give the uh, partial solution for this conjecture in 1D case and 2D case. In 1D case, the conjecture is, uh, yeah, the inequality is very is uh, the desired form, but in the case of 2D, the, uh, the coefficient of the Hubert space dimensions uh, yeah, makes, makes the uh, current and the CMI decay only includes a pairwise Markov network. And uh, in order to obtain this, uh, 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 I mean, the, this bound, uh, I developed two new techniques for the effective Hamiltonian. The first one is the exponential decomposition of the reduced density matrix. In one d case, belief propagation formalism is utilized. And in high dimensional case, partial trace projection formalism is utilized. In the, in the uh, second technique, the second technique is uh, uh, quasi-locality analysis Quasi locality analysis of the logarithm exponential connection of the logarithm operator, eh, logarithm of the exponential connections, and which is uh, formally given by using these expressions. Okay, so I want to show. Okay, ah, okay. I, I also show the open problem, three open problems. The first one may be the most important. Uh, can we improve the subset dependence from the uh, DAC form to log logarithmic or the polylogarithmic of the DAC form? Uh, this proving, this proves the global Markov property, so uh, we can prove the uh, completely, uh, yeah, we can prove the quantum Markov com conjecture completely, in complete sense. And the second question is uh, a bit subtle, but uh, this is also important, uh, whether we can access the true effective Hamiltonians. In, in, our for, in, in my formalism, I first uh, approximate the reduced density matrix in the exponential form, and then uh, proving the uh, quasi-locality of this logarithm, I mean, a uh, logarithm of this uh, approximate reduced density matrix. So even if the logarithm of this approximate reduced density matrix is, uh, shows the quasi-locality, we cannot say that the true uh, effective Hamiltonian also satisfies the quasi-localities. This is another uh, important point. 
And, and by solving this point, uh, uh, we can apply this uh, property to the uh, Hamiltonian learning with polylog sample complexity uh, by using similar technique uh, for the commute, uh, Hamiltonian learning for commuting Hamiltonians. And this is also relevant to the, uh, today's morning session by uh, Bakshi Liu, Moitra, and Tang. And uh, yeah, their result also uh, achieves the uh, polynomial time, uh, I mean the polynomial time uh, and the polynom polynomial uh, sample complexities. So if, if their result can achieve the uh, optimal sample complexities, then uh, this result, this uh, application is not so important. And the third one is, uh, can we recover the result at high temperatures? Uh, as I have uh, mentioned that my previous result on the PRF paper includes some uh, flaws. So it is still open whether the uh, quantum Markov uh, conjecture is true at high temperatures. And uh, to solve this uh, point, uh, I think uh, we need a new formalism to treat the uh, high temperature quantum Gibbs state. Uh, in, in this uh, study, we already, uh, I already uh, derived the uh, CMI decay at arbitrary temperature, but the CMI decay at high temperature uh, is much stronger than the uh, present result. Uh, for example, uh, the high, in the high temperature case, uh, the CMI decay holds for arbitrary, uh, uh, arbitrary ABC decomposition. Even ABC is included in the total system, the CMI decay holds. So in this sense, the high temperature CMI decay is still very important problem. Okay, uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, we have time for questions. There's a question over there. Uh, thank you for a good talk. So in, is, uh, in, in the 1D case, uh, mm -hmm. is the uh, effective Hamiltonian HX star independent uh, of the temperature? HX star. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, in, in the brief propagation slide. Oh, brief propagation slide. Oh. Oh, yeah. HX tilde star. Oh yeah, yeah. This uh, depends on the temperature, but uh, at, in this in the one D case, uh, this H X star is completely non-local. Maybe completely non-local uh, in the in the region X because we don't have any information the explicit form of this H X tilde. Okay, thank you. So so it's it's sufficient that H uh, X. Did I support it on eggs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is only the important point. Thank yeah. you. Right. Yeah, uh, thank you for the great talk. Um, you said on the last slide that you, we need a new formalism and that you have some information on a supplemental slide. Yeah. And I would be quite curious to see that. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, in the case, uh, yeah. Yeah, in the case of the, I mean, the step of the proof is the same in the case of the high temperature and the low temperature case. I first show the exponential form of the high temperature quantum Gibbs state by using this formalism. This V, uh, V shield lambda is given by this form. This is, the, this is actually, uh, at first glance, this is very complicated, but this is, this can be, uh, proved to be quasi-local around the region L if the beta is sufficiently small. Then uh, we want to, yeah, I re rely on this uh, exponential form. And the point is how to, yeah, the point is whether we can recover the quasi-local property of the uh, effective Hamiltonian. And the, and other point is that the simple Taylor expansion cannot be used uh, to derive the uh, quasi-locality quasi of the effective Hamiltonians, even in the level of the first order expansion uh, with respect to the uh, boundary interaction uh, in the region L. By considering the, uh, by, I mean, the applying this uh, expression to this one, we can prove that the uh, first order expression with respect to the 
uh, and the boundary interaction is given by this form. And this is also uh, expand, uh, and, uh, simplified like this form. This round HL, L omega is uh, supported on the region L. And uh, uh, yeah, this is also a spectral decomposition of the, uh, uh, the boundary interactions. And this F beta omega is a function, some function like this form. And this is also the function with this, uh, yeah, the, yeah. And uh, we consider the uh, other HLC is the commutator uh, with uh, uh, sub subset Hamiltonian of the H uh, LCs. And the point is that by using the Taylor expansion of this uh, uh, functions, we can formally uh, expand like this form. This mu beta omega m is a Taylor uh, expansion coefficient of this function. And uh, this also, also appears a multi commutator with uh, uh, subset Hamiltonian in HLC. Then we have that the mu beta omega m is only decays with uh, exponential minus uh, order, omega, uh, order m because uh, uh, this function, the Taylor expansion of this function includes the Bernoulli numbers. And uh, it is also known that the multi commutator with, uh, with Hamiltonian uh, increases like uh, m2 over order m times exponential order m. So if the beta is sufficiently large, this uh, expansion does not converge. So from this reason, uh, I believe that the uh, cluster expansion method is not convergent uh, in general uh, if, if we apply it to the reduced density matrix. So in the new technique uh, I uh, developed in the previous, uh, in this uh, talk, I consider the uh, C, oh, I consider the uh, C, yeah, this is also decomposed by the, by using some C operators. And C operator is now, oh, C operator is now given by using the uh, time evolution of the uh, subset Hamiltonian outside the region L, and this is still quasi-local. So quasi-locality still holds, so by using, by using this, uh, I mean the high temperature uh, formalism for the exponential expression and the quasi-locality estimation of the uh, exponential operators, I believe that the, uh, CMI decay at high temperature can be recovered. Yeah, this is a rough estimation, uh, explanation of the uh, new uh, yeah, approach at high temperature case. We have time for one quick question if somebody wants to go. Yeah, hi. Um, so, I recall like in the high temperature case, you're able to say something like, if you look at the effective Hamiltonian and then look at the terms on the interior of, um, of whatever of the ball that you're considering, then the terms will be preserved from the original Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. Is this something that is true in the analysis? The like, can it be recovered from the quasi-locality analysis in this uh, more general temperature regime? Or? Oh, uh, the point of this uh, f uh, in the high temperature case is that one uh, that we can uh, take the trace uh, one by one uh, tracing out. I first uh, tracing out the site I and site I, I dash and I dash dash. Then uh, the I mean the uh, the, di the explanation is difficult, but the ex uh, effective Hamiltonian form is still very small if the temperature is sufficiently large, then by using this, I mean, the effective, uh, uh, each of the, I mean, the uh, uh, tracing out the single site, then the effective term is still very small. So by connecting the uh, single site and the tracing out, then uh, we can still prove the, yeah, I, I expect that we can prove the quasi-locality of the uh, effective Hamiltonians. So, okay. So the point is that the effective Hamiltonian term is quite large in the case of the low temperature case. But in the case of the high temperature case, the effective Hamiltonian term is very small. So this point uh, makes a quite a big difference uh, uh, in the analysis. Okay, thanks. All right, yeah. with that, let's end the session and let's thank Tamataka again. Thank you very much.